Hello and welcome back. In this video we're continuing our discussion of Chapter 8, Klein Organic Chemistry, which is alkene addition reactions. And in this reaction we are will study acid catalyzed hydration. So what are we adding and where are we adding it? We're adding H and OH across a double bond in this reaction. So we're adding H and OH across a double bond. And this gets Markovnikov regiochemistry. So the hydrogen is going to go to the side with more hydrogens. The OH goes to the side with more alkyl groups. So for this reaction here, we have an alkene. And we're going to add H and OH across that double bond. So we're going to add H to this side and OH to this side. Now this doesn't imply a mechanism. This is just showing you where these two things are going. And you can see here in the product that we've added OH to the right and the H went to the left, which isn't shown, and there was already a hydrogen there, so it's still there. All right, so sulfuric acid is typically the acid catalyst we use, acid catalyst we use for this reaction, and the reason is because uh, sulfuric acid is not nucleophilic. It doesn't act as a nucleophile like some of our halo acids will, and therefore it will <coughs> uh, help to uh, help this reaction to occur without competing. Okay, so here again we have an alkene. We're going to add water across the double bond and we get this product with sulfuric acid as the catalyst. So again the OH is added to the more substituted carbon of the alkene and the more substituted that carbon is because of the mechanism the faster the reaction. So if we add water to just ethene where we just have two carbons there's no subs there are no substituents on the double bond if we consider that to have a relative rate of 1 adding water across that double bond then an alkene with just one substituent would be 10 to the 6 or a million times as fast and adding in fact this is the reaction uh, from propene uh, this reaction is actually used to make isopropyl alcohol. And if we added another substituent to that double bond, then we get uh, 10 to the 11th speed on that reaction relative to just having ethene, and that produces, this reaction produces T-butyl alcohol. So let's look at the mechanism and see if we can understand the relative rates. So in the first step of this reaction, the alkene is acting as a base, picking up a hydrogen. So let's see if we can, I'll just choose orange here, picking up a hydrogen from the water. So notice, really, the first step of this reaction is the formation of hydronium. So the sulfuric acid is used to protonate the water that's in the reaction flask, producing hydronium, which then protonates the alkene. Now we get a carbocation intermediate whereby the carbocation, the positive charge, will be on the more substituted side of this of what was the alkene and the hydrogen goes to the less substituted side and that's because uh, the positive charge is more stable on the more substituted side. Now that carbocation is substituted is uh, subject to nucleophilic attack and the only nucleophile we have hanging around is water. So water acting as a nucleophile attacks that carbocation. The next step in this reaction mechanism is to remove the hydrogen which and thereby uh, removing the positive charge from this oxonium ion that's formed as an intermediate. Okay, so we have this positive charge on oxygen. Why? Oxygen wants six electrons. Here it has one, two, three, four, five. So that leaves it with a positive charge. So in order to produce our product, we need to deprotonate. So the water, acting as a base, pulls off a hydrogen to give us our final product. So again, we've added what? We've added H and OH across that what was our alkene. Now for this reaction if we use dilute sulfuric acid this reaction will go forward. Like I said we put sulfuric acid in water 
to get this reaction to move forward. And if we use concentrated sulfuric acid and heat it up, we can get this reaction to go in the reverse direction. So we can either add water across the double bond to give us the, uh, the alcohol, or we can remove water to give us a double bond. Okay, so this reaction is reversible. So if we want to synthesize an alcohol, we're going to use excess water. And if we're synthesizing an alkene from an alcohol, we just need to use concentrated sulfuric acid and heat it up, and that will uh, give us the reverse reaction. So we looked, talked about regiochemistry in this reaction. The next thing to consider is stereochemistry. The stereochemistry of hydration uh, is, anal is analogous to the um, hydrohalogenation where we had uh, the racemic mixture produced. Okay, so if we produce a chiral center, then we get a racemic mixture. So here we have the alkene on the left. Uh, we have our H3O+, plus, which remember is the same thing as sulfuric acid and water. So you can see either of these things in your uh, as your reagent, which you're going to see over the arrow. Okay, and that gives us a 50-50 racemic mixture. So if by forming a carbocation, we get a racemic mixture, so a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers as products. Okay, um, and so let's look at why that is. Uh, if we protonate this, let's go ahead and erase this, and we'll look at why that is. Okay, so let's choose black. Okay, so remember we've got our H3O plus here and the first step of the mechanism. So to understand this, of course, we need to look at the mechanism. So the first step of this mechanism, we're going to protonate the alkene. The alkene picks up a hydrogen from that uh, hydronium ion, and so the, the uh, water will leave. And then in the next step, we have the protonated alkene. So which side does the hydrogen go to and which side does the positive charge go to? The hydrogen is going to go to the less substituted side, so the positive charge will go to the more substituted side. So now we've created a positive charge on this alkene, so what does that mean? Um, it means that this carbon where we created the positive charge is now planar. So it has an empty p orbital which extends in this case, in front of and behind the plane of the board. So our nucleophile, which is water, can add either from the back, okay, and if it does, that would give us this uh, one on the right, product on the right, and if it adds to the front, we would get the product on the left. Of course, I'm not showing the last step, which is, would have been deprotonation to give us the final product but basically this is why we get the racemic mixture. So let's see if we can determine whether we would need to use dilute or concentrated sulfuric acid to achieve each of the following transformations. So on the top one for A, we're going, we're adding water across this double bond. So the double bond was here. We added water across it, so we're not showing the hydrogen that was added because it's not needed to be shown here. And so, of course, we're going to add dilute sulfuric acid. Okay, For the bottom one, we're taking away water, so we're pulling one of these hydrogens off that's right here. So we're removing H and OH to form a double bond through an elimination reaction. And therefore, we're going to use concentrated sulfuric acid. See if we can draw a mechanism for this reaction. So in the first step, we've got hyd hydronium. Okay, we're going to protonate that hydronium to give us positive charge on the more substituted side. Okay, and the hydrogen went to the less substituted side. So remember, there was already one hydrogen there. It's still there. The other hydrogen adds to the side with more hydrogens. 
So in the next step, we've got some water hanging around. In this case, the water is going to act as a nucleophile attacking that carbyl cation. I already had an arrow there, so I'll just erase that for clarity. All right, and so now we have a formed, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to draw two lone pairs. Now we've formed this species with the oxonium ion that has a positive charge on it, and I'm just gonna leave those hydrogens off for clarity. All right, and so in the next step, Water is going to act as a base, pulling off a hydrogen and regenerating or, or generating the product, which is the, shown here. So uh, that is our mechanism for this reaction. So if we have a solvent other than water, okay, we can actually get a similar reaction where that solvent takes the place of water and acts as a nucleophile. Okay, so let's look at this reaction for A. Okay, and see if we can uh, see if we can draw the mechanism to show how we got from right uh, from left to right. Okay. So for this reaction, we have methanol in the presence of sulfuric acid. So what happens when we put that methanol in sulfuric acid? Well, we're going to protonate it, right? We're going to protonate it, just like we protonated the water. Instead of H3O+, we form this species here, and that species is capable of protonating our alkene. Okay, so in the next step, we have the protonated alkene, so the hydrogen went to the less substituted side. Now there were already two hydrogens there, and they're still there. I'm just showing the hydrogen that we added. And we have a positive charge formed on that as a carbocation on the other carbon. All right, next we've got some methanol hanging around. And this methanol has a lo a, um, lone pairs in, on the oxygen, and they can act as a nucleophile to attack that carbocation. So we have this species that looks very similar to the oxonium ion. Okay. Now in the final step, we just have to pull off that hydrogen so we won't have a positive charge anymore. So we get an ether. Uh, I don't I hope I won't draw that hydrogen in. So this is our product. Okay. So for the next one, see if we can draw the mechanism. This one is interesting. This is B. All right, and so we have both an alkene and alcohol functionality in this species here. So if we add sulfuric acid to this, what are we going to do? We're going to protonate this species. We're going to protonate this oxygen. So that's going to give this a positive charge. So I'm just going to leave that step out because we don't have a lot of room here. Okay, so in the next step, so that's just like forming this species up here. Okay. So in the next step, the alkene is going to pick up a hydrogen, okay, giving us what? A hydrogen on one side of that alkene, positive charge on the more substituted side. Okay. Now we have our neutral oxygen species again which can act as a nucleophile and attack that carbocation. Now what's that going to give us? Okay, it's going to give us this species here. Give me 
me go ahead and get my black back. There's an oxygen in the ring. Okay, how did I know that? Because I've got a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring. I have six atoms in the ring. Six membered ring looks like cyclohexane, and so I just replaced one of those carbons with an oxygen. And this is our species, that's uh, almost our product here. And then in the last step, another molecule of this um, starting material can come along and act as a base and pull off the hydrogen, giving us the product shown above. Okay, So that would be the mechanism for the formation of that product here. Um, so just keep in mind, if we have an alcohol, we can do the same thing. We can add H and the rest of the alcohol across that double bond. So if we had, um, so in the, t in the top case, we had methanol. So what are we adding across the double bond? We're adding H and the other side of the alcohol. See, we added H over here. We added the other side of the alcohol here. So it's like we're splitting that alcohol apart and putting it across the double bond. So for B, it's a little bit more confusing because we have those species within the same uh, starting material, but we're adding the H, and then we're adding this side of the molecule across that double bond where the H goes here and the other side oxygen R group goes there okay all right so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video